from the hollers and hills of West Virginia, it's Heavenly Hills Homestead with another episode. Stay tuned. Boom! Right, guys so this is going to be kind of a two-parter uh yeah two-parter video um so we've been shooting videos all day today trying to get caught up with some of our stuff and uh we're, we're just now getting to this part of the video uh so work with me here while i do my thing here all right like i was saying this is a two-part video uh the first part we're going to talk about figs and um uh, my love for fig trees. Okay. I love fig trees. Um, in 2020, uh, we had actually found some fig trees and, uh, <clears throat> uh, at, uh, at Lowe's and I was like, Hey, you know what? I like these fig trees. I want to buy one. So we bought one. It was called a Chicago fig, uh, really liked it and, and everything about it. Um, and so we grew that fig indoors until oh goodness um when did we when did we grow that out till we grew it out till um probably in 2021 spring of 2021 then we put it outside uh probably like late spring early summer we did get some production but it didn't go to it didn't finish the the berries or the whatever you want to call them the figs did not finish up and so we didn't get any off of it this year I thought it was dead. Well, last year, 2022, I thought it was dead. It was, it was bad. And I thought, oh my, you know, my tree's dead. And I'm, I was very upset. Lo and behold, come about June, it come to life. And it thing grew into a massive fig tree from June uh, all the way through October. Produced tons of figs, but we did not get any because they just, they just for whatever reason, did not produce uh, viable figs. And so some people said, you know, it takes about two years, but that was a Chicago fig and it's supposed to be hardy in Chicago weather. So, you know, hopefully here in West Virginia, it would survive, right? Well, anyhow, we're still working on that. But my love for figs and my, my kind of uh, uh, curiosity with all these different fig trees has really started to erupt and turn into something. And so what we have here is uh, I bought four uh, four different figs. Uh, the, I bought a uh, Marcel's Italian honey fig. Now it won't be here until uh, let me see, let's see uh, when we might be able to get this fig tree. Um, hmm. Weird. It says it's out for delivery right now. Hmm. Okay, well, that one says it's out for delivery and arriving today by 8 p.m. So maybe between now and the end of this video, that other one will be arriving. Um, but these three right here that did arrive today are the, uh, the Laterula, Laterula honey fig, okay, which is this one right here. Okay, it's L-A-T-T-A-R-U-L-A -T -T honey fig, Laterula honey uh, fig. And then we have LSU purple, which is right here. And, uh, I really like the way that these fruits look and how well that these plants grow. And then we have one of, one of the ones that I've really been looking at for quite some time. I've been looking at both the LSU and this one right here for quite some time. The laterola was more or less of a, 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 I seen it and thought we, we would get it. And then that Marcel's that we're waiting on, it says we'll be here today. 
that was another one that I, I it gets huge figs and I was very intrigued by it. But really been looking at the LSU in this. Uh, this is called a, a Violet de Bordeaux uh, fig tree, okay? And um, and so, again, the Laterula LSU purple and the Bordeaux, the Violetta Bordeaux. All right, and uh, just kind of want to talk about, you know, these these fig trees a little bit and, and you know, what, what they are, what you can expect from them, et cetera. Um, so let's see here. Um, so, you know, this just says, you know, what you'll be getting now, <clears throat> this laterula right here, um, you know, it says it uh, grows very large sweet fruit and excellent reba uh, and fall crop. It's hard to go wrong with this guy. While rumored to be able to survive lower than our recommended zones 7 through 10, it can be grown outside of these zones in the warmer months and brought indoors during the winter which is probably what we will do with this one in particularly. Um, the fig tree can grow, uh, or I'll put it out in, uh, I'll probably put it out in our high tunnel uh, whenever that gets installed this spring. Um, anyways, uh, let's see here. Um, this fig tree can grow for a very long time, so be sure to always plant out where you want them uh, to stay or plant them in a container where they, can, uh, where they will be smaller and you can move them around. This can grow up to 15 to 20 feet, again, zone 7 through 10 in the fall and winter. Uh, figs ship uh, dormant with no leaves. Well, this one here has leaves on it. So it either was dormant and had leaves on it uh, when they shipped it, or it grew leaves while it was shipped. I don't know which one that is. Uh, anyhow, um, leaves will reemerge in the spring. Well, we got leaves on ours, so we're, we're happy with that. Uh, anyhow, so there's, there's that. That's the Laterula. Um, fig in 15 to 20 feet. That's a pretty big tree, and it, it, and it can survive outside of the seven zone seven through ten. Uh, but you want to be very aware of you know where you're at, and, and maybe if you're outside of those zones, it gets really cold. Um, I have read places uh, very very cold, uh, you know, 20 and down uh, have been able to get these to survive. But they they wrap them and they cover them like they'll wrap the they'll wrap them in bubble wrap. Uh, in the in the fall time, after the leaves have fell off, they'll wrap them in bubble wrap, and they'll pile the mulch and the compost around the base of them to keep those root balls warm. Um, so then we're going to talk about the LSU purple uh, right here. Um, you know, th this one here uh, says the fruit um, variety produces a close eye fruit that is medium sized, long, and uh, turbinate. Um, the skin color is glossy dark purple with a reddish tint, light amber to light strawberry colored pulp, which is the inside. Um, let see, a, a heavy main crop is produced in July, uh, followed by a later crop that, is, uh, that often lasts into December. The mild flavor is good. The fruit has high sugar content uh, suited for the southeast U.S. It is uh, of uh, the common variety of fig, meaning it does not require pollination uh, or an other plant to develop and mature fruit. Uh, well, our plants produce, you know, three to eight inches long, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's just talking about how they ship these. Uh, average mature height for this plant is eight to ten feet, so quite quite considerably smaller than this Laterula plant. Um you know, soil uh, will not tolerate excessively wet soil, but needs ample moisture during fruiting. Uh, light, full sun, zone 7 through 10, can be grown indoors. Uh, in the fall, winter months, you can bring it in. Uh, the, you know, it just talks about the leaves reemerging and stuff. So um, this one right here, you know, it. I think you have to take more care of the LSU purple than you would this laterula. I think you, I don't think you would get away with growing this outdoors very much here in West Virginia or any higher, uh, you know, further up north than here. Uh, the LSU Purple was designed by LSU, from my best understanding, and so um, that's where that's where you get your uh, your your LSU Purple from, right? It was designed at LSU. They have a huge fig program. In fact, they got tons of figs down there uh, at LSU. So go check that out. Um, let me see here. The next one is the Violet de Bordeaux. 
So let's back out of here and get that one. I'm talking about this one right here next. Pull these two back. All right, so uh, it says our passion for fig continues to grow as we discover new varieties and the ease at which they grow. We now have several varieties and varying cold hardiness to satisfy the collector of these beautiful Mediterranean species. The Violet de Bordeaux is our latest selection with such an, with such an alluring name uh, you would be hard pressed not to fall in love with, with it. Uh, rated uh, to zone seven uh, may come, uh, or excuse me, many homes uh, can enjoy growing this cultivar outdoors year round. Grows 20, excuse me, grows 12 to 20 feet, so zone six through 10. Uh, and in the fall, you know, you can bring it in and everything uh, like that. So, uh, you know, it, it, it is a little bit more cold hardy, but not a lot more. Uh, but from what I've read, there is people who have them up north. Again, they cover them up really well. They uh, do real good about uh, composting and, and putting down mulch around the base of the plant and ensure that they have production the next season. Now, the Marcel's uh, honey, one, the Italian honey that we should have here by hopefully before this video ends, uh, it is a cold hardy fig and does really, really well in, in the cold. Um, so, you know, you just got to kind of play around. We'll, we'll go on ahead and talk about that one real quick. Um, let me see here. Well, it looks like we're going to have to find another place to look that up at. So let's just copy and paste. And, uh, and we'll just find somewhere else to, to, uh, to look us up at. All right, so uh, this it says it tastes you know, very sweet. Um, the white Marcells is one of the figs grown at the Monticello by Thomas Jefferson. It is a very large green to yellow skin and white flesh with good flavor and very sweet with a high sugar content. So that's pretty cool that uh, that, that um, white Marcel's uh, honey fig, well, Italian honey fig was grown by uh, Thomas Jefferson at the Monticello. I think that's some pretty interesting things. I love the history behind some of these figs. Um, let's see if we can get a, you know, how big does it get? Let's see here. Eight feet tall and it is cold hardy, zero to negative five from what this says. Uh, mature height is uh, eight foot. Uh, mature width is five to six foot. Self fertile and the spacing is five to six foot in between each one of these. So, uh, guys, this that's pretty interesting there. Uh, you know about this uh, white Marcel's honey fig. Um, so uh, we 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 want to uh, we want to start doing some things around here. Uh, and this is one reason why I wanted to talk about these. So as our fig collection grows. Uh, this spring, we're going to be offering a few cuttings off of our Chicago fig right here on the channel. We're going to be offering them for sale like we do our seeds. So you'll be able to find those up for sale. And then we're going to be, you know, selling our, our Violet Bordeaux, our LSU Purples and our Laterulas as they become available. Now, we may have some of those this year, late in the year, you know, toward, uh, toward fall, depending on how big the plants get but we are going to start cutting these and taking cuttings and starting to sell these plants. So I want to make you guys aware of that. So if you guys are going to be thinking about figs to come, you guys can follow the process here. You guys can see how we grow these. You know, when I bought my fig, my Chicago fig that's outside, let's see if we can get some pictures and kind of post them right here of the Chicago fig from this summer. But you, um, you, you know, that fig grew and was what much bigger than this right here when we got it, you know, it was, in a little old pot, you know, and, and we put it in a great big yellow pot, which we have in our grow room right now, growing our black pearls, which has been growing for probably two years now uh, in that. But anyhow, um, it started out small. We put it inside. All the leaves fell off of it. I brought it in uh, indoors, and by December, the leaves were back on it. It was in full full growth state. I planted it out, like I said, late um, 2021 late spring it grew into this big beautiful plant and did produce some fruit but none of them mature same thing for 2022 it grew a whole new plant 
in 2022 because all the all the tops were gotten so bad. So I'm hoping that we won't have to go through that again this spring. I don't think we will, but I'm hoping we won't. Um, I'm hoping that I had enough stuff around the base of that that it kept it warm. But you know, we had a horrible, horrible uh, time back. You know, December 23rd to December 24th with it blowing. You know, negative 30. Okay, so I don't I don't know, but it did get it only got cold for those two days, and then it got really warm, and it has stayed pretty much warm. High, you know, high, you know, 20s, 29 degrees all the way up into like you know, 70s, right? So it's not been very, very cold, okay? The majority of the time it's been, 50, you know, 40s and 50 degree uh, days with, you know, high 30s to low 40 nights, okay? So it's been pretty mild this this winter. So anyhow, um, we're going to be planting these up in some different pots to come up in another video, but just wanted to kind of briefly talk about these and what they are and, and you know, get you guys prepared to hopefully be, in, you know, wanting to, you know, take this fig journey with us because I love figs and I want you guys to fall in love with figs too. They taste good. They're a lot of fun. There's tons of varieties, guys. They all comes in different shapes and sizes and tastes and stuff, you know, uh, like, like there's honey figs, berry figs, and then there's some other kind of fig. I can't remember the name of it, right? But there's tons of that. And we'll get into those in a different fig video. But just kind of wanted to show you guys what we have and our plans for these moving forward and getting more figs to come. So, those are our figs, again, the Violet de Bordeaux, the LSU Purple, and the Laterula. So the other thing that you know, we want to talk about real quick is this was a two-parter. So uh, this right here is Florel. For those of you who do not know what Florel is, Florel is a, 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 a hormone, okay? And it is a PGR. Uh, PGRs is a, uh, I can't think of exactly what that stands for right off the top of my head. Um, it's a, it's a plant regulated growth, plant, right? Yeah. Plant, plant, plant regulated growth hormone. Okay. Uh, PGR, I think is, is, is what it, uh, PGR stands for. So anyhow, um, this is what a lot of giant growers have started going to, uh, using on their giant pumpkins. And so the other day I was on a, a marijuana growing show. Um, not that I grow marijuana, but uh, they wanted me to come on and talk about the giants and all that. And so I thought, yeah, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to take this opportunity to go talk to them. And we learned quite a bit from them. In fact, we're going to have them come on the show and talk to them because they had a lot of good ideas that I don't think many gardeners or giant growers have really been able to consider, uh, you know, the past you know, I don't know how many years, right? We just haven't thought about that. You know, just hadn't, you know, when they, when I said perlite, they were like, <laughs> you know, perlite, no, horrible, bad stuff. You know, and they start going and talking about all the reasons why perlite's bad. And I'm like, oh my gosh, thank God I hadn't put any perlite in my patch yet, right? Um, but they talked about volcanic rock, you know, pumice and volcanic, you know, rocks and, and, and those things. Some of the things that we would use in uh, hydroponic growing. And I thought, wow, that's, that's pretty amazing. You know, so I wanted to get them on and talk to us. But we got on this subject right here, and they confirmed exactly what I felt and what I thought was the proper interpretation for using this stuff right here. Now, I'm going to do a two-year study on Florel and the damaging effects that it has on our seeds, okay? Uh, they will talk, I'm sure, in depth uh, about PGRs. We're probably going to have to break that video down. I was on their show for three hours, so we're probably going to have them on for quite some time. We're probably going to have to break down their videos into several videos as well. But this stuff here is not good stuff. It's not good stuff at all. Um, you know, you just, well, no, you know, I just thought about something. You can't break it down. You guys are going to have to stay tuned because it's going to be a live stream when I have them on. So it's going to be like a two, three hour long live stream. Okay, so anyhow. Um, but this stuff is really bad. You know, and it says you can use it in production of cantaloupes, cucumbers, pumpkins, squash, etc. right? Um, but after they explained this stuff I, and, 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 and confirmed what I thought was, was, was what was going on inside the plant, this stuff is harmful. Not only harmful to, to the plant and, and everything that involves it, but it's harmful to us. Like literally, it harms our bodies. It's not good stuff for us. Look up some of the uh, studies done with PGRs and things, and you'll see what I'm talking about. I, I looked them up, and I thought, my goodness, it's, you know, it's horrible stuff. So uh, this stuff right here, 
uh, is not good, but I am going to grow a pumpkin, a single pumpkin this year. You guys are going to take the journey with me. We're going to grow a pumpkin using Florel. And I probably will, I, you know, if everything stays true to Florel, I will probably grow the biggest pumpkin that I have ever grown uh, with using Florel. Um, and then I will grow that pumpkin again exactly the same i will follow every step i'll plant on the same day if i plant on may 15th this year i'll plant that plant next year on may 15th i will follow every step to the t of how i raise that plant minus the florel and we will see the difference in 2024 versus 2023 okay 2023 i'm probably gonna grow a humongous pumpkin in 2024 probably not going to get one okay um what this does is it manipulates the genetics it is literally telling the genetics to to produce something that is not genetically there uh they they did it this way they said okay go look at a a marijuana bud a marijuana nugget okay um used growing this and how tight and distorted and everything that it looks versus you you know going and looking at one that was organically grown without the pgr yeah they'll be tight and stuff but you'll be able to tell a real difference in the two okay so that right there, we finally got our Florel in. We're going to be using this stuff. In fact, if I can get a tomato to grow inside uh, this winter, we're going to use Florel on that tomato. Hey, you know, why not, right? Let's, let's go on ahead and do the studies on tomatoes, pumpkins, and the whole nine yards, right? Um, and I have a giant pumpkin growing in there. So as soon as we get ready to, to uh, grow that giant pumpkin in there, I'm going to put the Florel on that, on an indoor giant pumpkin. So anyhow, moving along, this right here is the stuff that we're going to be putting on our um, plants indoors because we cannot, and I repeat, cannot. I have tried every, I've tried the alcohol, diluted alcohol, tried the diluted peroxide. I have tried, you know, um, several different other things that I've gotten from, from other pla places and companies and things, different, different types of, uh, of uh, pesticides and stuff and nothing, it will kill them and knock them down, but it's not knocking them out. And then they rebound, right? And I can't spray my stuff indoors three times a week with this stuff. It's just not feasible because I burn, I burn the leaves up and I can be doing it at a, at a negative, uh, you know, rate, you know, like if it calls for, you know, a teaspoon per gallon, I can literally use, you know, two eyedroppers per, per, you know, uh, that much water, uh, you know, like eight ounces and I still get leaf burn. So it's just not feasible to do. So what we're going to do is this right here, it worked last winter. I used it last winter and it worked. Um, I don't like to use it because you can't eat nothing off of the plants for 21 days. Uh, I would, I would suggest maybe even going a little further than that, you know, 25 to 30, um, if you can, but this is basically, it, it, it not basically, it is imidacloprid, uh, within this right here. And so imidacloprid, you guys know, I don't use that on my food outside. Um, I will use it on my pumpkin plants like WSP 75 imidacloprid I use on my pumpkin plants keep them free of pests like the squash vine borer, but I don't use it on anything else out there. Um, this, however, I will use indoors on them at a, at a very little rate, just enough to kill them out. It is systemic. So, you know, they're, they're going to bite, they're going to die. If it's in, if the eggs and stuff are in the soil, they're going to die. So this stuff I'm going to use in here uh, just to kill back the, the, the aphids and because they're just, they're nothing is killing them off. And I mean nothing. I have tried probably 10 different things and all I'm getting is leaf burn or no, no results at all. Okay. So we got to do something if I want to produce anything this winter indoors because the aphids are just that bad. Literally I can sit here and watch aphids crawl across the table. All right. Like going from this to this, like they're just going back and forth and it's just, no, we're killing them out. Okay. So, uh, that's what this is for. It does work. I used it last winter. Really good success rate with it. It's Monterey brand. It's, uh, uh, again, it's, you know, the systemic soil drench for the fruit, trees, and vegetables. And, you know, you don't want to eat anything off of it for at least 21 days. I would suggest going 25 to even 30 and make sure you're flushing. Uh, you know, like I would say probably around day, for me, I think last year I did about day 15. I washed the plants. I made sure there was no you know, needing of, of reoccurring, you know, usage of this. And I started, you know, about day 15 flushing the plants, just watering, 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 trying to just flush it out. Um, so anyhow, 
this stuff does work and this right here is what we're going to be using to get rid of the aphids so uh you guys will be able to see all that progression you know you guys know how bad the aphids are there's a video that i got that i'm editing right now from last night uh that i didn't get to finish because we had to take Jaden to the er uh, but we when we got home with him we went on ahead and i finished up that video so we're, we're going to be talking more about that because we picked everything over here off that way we could go on ahead and, and uh and use this today to kill them out so basically all we're going to do is we're going to you know, use this at a at a, a a rate that i can get rid of them without having to use the full amount okay we're just just going to push it a little bit okay and uh 21 days from now we'll be able to eat anything if we want to but try to drag it out to 25 to 30. so guys that is all we have for this evening we got several other videos coming up so stay tuned for those but uh, anyhow, guys, this is talking about our fig trees, the Florel, and the uh, systemic soil drench right here. Guys, we appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time right here in the Hollers and Hills of West Virginia. Don't forget to smash that like button. That notification bell. Don't get the Good job. Here you go. Thank you. Don't forget to share. Yep. There you go. Good job. And, and subscribe. subscribe.